Right now, authorities are asking for your help in finding an elderly couple that hasn't been seen since Thanksgiving yesterday. And we're taking a look if the deals on Black Friday are actually worth all the hustle and bustle. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, I'm Keely Arthur and with meteorologist Chris Reese and it's, it's Friday. Friday, November 29th, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Friday, Way November to continue. 29th, nice yeah. segue. <laughs> very excited to be joining you today, uh, feels like a weekend, it does feel like a weekend, it's going to feel festive as well, especially as you head out the door, at least in Madison and some areas around it. We've seen some light snow flurries out there and I've been tracking them so far though. Some drier air is trying to stream into the mix that may turn some of those off and then transition that over into some areas of some freezing drizzle. Speaking of freezing drizzle, that is what we're seeing in and around Janesville, Edgerton over towards Milton. It is snow flurries though as you work your way up throughout parts of Dane County. Wanakee getting in on a little more batch of flurries. We're still seeing some of those in the Madison area and then points towards the north and west. We're at 31 right now. That light snow finally showing up at the airport as we go throughout the rest of the morning. We're going to see those temperatures gradually warm up. 36 by 12 o'clock. We'll keep the clouds and the drizzle around. I do think we'll top off right around 39 as we head into the afternoon and evening Keeley. So not a bad day overall. Uh, you may see some festive flakes or freezing drizzle at times, but I think if you're going to be headed out, the weather should be on your side. Yeah, we're going to see the snow but in terms of driving, because I know a lot of people will be doing that today. You might see a slick spot early this morning just because it's below freezing right mm -hmm. now, and it did make the ground wet when it came down, but otherwise, I'm not expecting any big issues today. All right. Well, thank you, Chris, and we'll see what the weekend has in store All in just right. a little bit. Well, breaking into the Channel 3000 Alert Center overnight, a silver alert is being issued for an elderly Dane County couple after they haven't been seen since leaving a gathering on Thanksgiving. Donald and Colleen Soper are both 87 years old. Authorities say they left a family gathering in Black Earth at around 3 yesterday afternoon. Donald planned to take Colleen on a drive before taking her back to an assisted living home in Cross Plains and returning to his home in Westport. Colleen has dementia and Donald is a diabetic who can get disoriented if his blood sugar isn't managed. They were last seen in a black Dodge Caliber with a license plate of 327 FXX. Anyone who's seen them should call the Dane County Sheriff's Office. Also breaking overnight, Fitchburg police are looking for two people after a robbery at a stop and go on Fish Hatchery Road. It happened just before 9 Thursday night. Police say two people wearing masks went into the store, pointed a gun at an employee and demanded money. They got away with some money and a canine unit wasn't able to track them down. Police say the investigation into the robbery is ongoing. A Janesville man is in custody after shooting another person early Thanksgiving morning. Janesville police responded to a report of a gunshot in the 1700 block of South Willard Avenue around 6.30 a.m. yesterday. Officials say they spoke to witnesses and learned a man was shot in the stomach. He was driven to St. Mary's Hospital in Janesville where he was later treated and released. The victim told police this man, 26-year-old Gage Holmes, was the one who shot him. He was arrested after meeting with police yesterday yesterday and faces a charge of first degree attempted homicide. He is being held in Rock County Jail until his initial court appearance. There's new information on arrests in a four month long investigation into a multi state meth trafficking organization. The Green County Sheriff's Office believes these three Tasha Nasker, Kyle Dish and Darren Demro are all involved in the operation. They were arrested this week after police found 115 grams of suspected meth at Demro's home. Dish, that's the man in the middle, is facing charges of conspiracy to deliver meth, possession and felon in possession of a firearm. Charges directly related to meth trafficking are pending for the other two. Federal and Texas authorities are expected to make more charges. And a woman is dead after a fire overnight at her home in the town of Beaver Dam. It happened just after 10 on Watercrest Lane. Deputies were able to rescue the 82-year-old woman from her home, but she later died from injuries at the hospital. A 91-year-old man also suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The cause of the fire is under investigation.
Sun Prairie's fire chief is calling for all residential buildings in the city to have working fire alarms and sprinklers. It comes after several residents were rescued during a fire at an apartment complex early yesterday morning. Officials say there was heavy smoke filling the first floor of the building and both the first and second floors had smoke damage. Two of the units are being considered unlivable after the fire. Fire Chief Chris Garrison says the building was compliant with fire codes for a building built in the 70s, but smoke detectors in the building weren't activated and the building's fire alarms weren't automatic. Volunteers and guests at a local homeless day shelter say this was their busiest year yet. In the three years they've been open, the Beacon says they've served more and more guests each Thanksgiving. A volunteer there said as rent keeps going up in Madison, they see more and more people needing their help on a regular basis. Last year they served about 200 guests, this year upwards of 250. That changed and there are more available spaces for our guests. Where are they going to go? You know, and that's what we're here for, and that's, you know, what we're to do. The Beacon says unless the costs of living decreases or people's wages increase, they expect to see more people this time next year. This comes as a group of neighbors in Madison appeals a city's board's decision to approve an expansion of a homeless shelter and allow the development of low-cost housing across the street. Earlier this year, the Madison Planning Commission gave the Salvation Army permission to double its capacity of the shelter, but opponents say the $25 million redevelopment project would draw more crime to the area. The city plans to review the appeal to see if it meets the requirements of having 20% of owners within 200 feet of the project's site. President Trump is on his way back to Florida this morning after a surprise visit with U.S. troops in Afghanistan for Thanksgiving. It was his first visit to the region since becoming president and comes less than three months after U.S. talks with the Taliban collapsed. He addressed the situation saying he's restarted peace negotiations with the militant group. He also reiterated his goal of pulling out some of the approximately 12,000 U.S. troops still in the country. And there will be a special welcome home ceremony today for about 190 Wisconsin National Guard soldiers who are home after a tour in Afghanistan. Their celebration will be at 145 this afternoon at Volkfield. The soldiers are from the Appleton based Red Arrow 2nd Battalion 127th Infantry. They've been demobilizing at Fort Bliss in Texas for the past few weeks. Another 200 soldiers from the same battalion came back to the U.S. this past weekend. Their homecoming ceremony has yet to be scheduled. And another feel good Thanksgiving homecoming for you this morning. It comes out of yesterday's turkey trot in Wausau, where one runner, Elizabeth Metz, finished the race and saw a face she thought she'd never see this holiday season. Her boyfriend just finished Air Force basic training and is now in tech school in Texas. He surprised her with a hug and an engagement ring at the finish line, and Metz said yes. Even with the rise in online shopping, Black Friday is still one of the busiest shopping days of the year. And this is a live look at Hilldale Shopping Center this morning. Some of the holiday shopping deals started on Thanksgiving, but a number of local shopping centers decided not to open early, instead letting their employees and shoppers enjoy Thanksgiving with their families. Both East and West Town Malls open just after 6, and Hilldale opens at 9 a.m. Even with a spike in online shopping, Black Friday is still one of the biggest shopping days of the year. But depending on what you're looking for, you may be able to avoid the crowds altogether. While today is the best day during the holiday shopping season to get those new TVs, marketing experts at Madison College say the biggest savings on just about everything else on your shopping list is actually going to be found online. Big tech items, I'd still go in store, but clothing, home goods, all of those other items you're going to gift, pajamas, socks, uh, really Cyber Monday is probably your day to do it. This is actually the shortest holiday shopping season in a long time due to Thanksgiving coming so late this year. Because of that, some retailers have tried to make up for lost shopping days, rolling out those online deals early. If you're worried about doing your shopping online because of the potential of someone taking those gifts off your doorstep, a lot of retailers are doing things to keep those packages safe. We'll tell you more about that in our next half hour.
Evacuation orders are still in effect and the flames continue to burn days after a chemical plant explosion in Texas. We're hearing from those affected by the incident this week and getting there was only half the challenge. Now we're tracking more weather that will continue to impact Thanksgiving weekend travel. Chris Reese is bringing an update to the upcoming alert right here on News 3 Now this morning. We've seen some light snow throughout the area this morning. A lot of that is starting to come to an end as some drier air works into the picture. You may not be able to see it on camera, but I can tell you there are a couple flakes flying right now out here on the patio. But the bigger story is the next winter storm that's going to be impacting the western part of the country along with parts of the upper Midwest. These are all the winter storm watches, winter storm warnings, blizzard warnings, and winter weather advisories that are in effect across the country right now. Some of those are as close as northern Wisconsin and parts of Minnesota, especially just north of the Twin Cities in western Iowa under a winter weather advisory as well. Here's that system overall. This area doesn't look to be filled in with the storm right now, but it will be as we go through time. I'll show you that in just a bit. In the meantime, we've been tracking the light snow and flurry action over us as we have gone through the morning. A lot of that again, though, being infiltrated by some drier air. That's why we're starting to see a lot of the snow shower activity come to a decrease as we go throughout the morning. So right now, while radar is not showing snow over Dane County, other than just north of Wanakee, you may still see those small flakes or freezing drizzle as you step out the door. We're also watching this activity as you work your way throughout parts of northern Rock County over towards Milton and Whitewater as well. Temperature wise, 
we are below freezing, so you'll want to be mindful of some potential slick spots. 31 in Madison right now, 32 for Janesville, lots of 30 showing up, but then we are at 28 as you work your way up towards the Wisconsin Dells. Folks, as you head out towards Black Friday shopping, look for those temperatures to gradually warm up. We will drop a degree as we go later on in the morning. We'll keep that snow and drizzle around, but we'll gradually begin to warm back up. 35 with drizzle by noontime, and then we'll see those temperatures around 39 for your afternoon highs. And again, I can't rule out that chance for the flurries and the drizzle to really be with us as we go throughout the day. More rain moves in as we move overnight into Saturday, and I think Saturday itself will be a rain filled day. This is all as this area of low pressure begins to arrive from the north and west. A warm front moves northward, creating the rain for us. It'll be snow as you work your way towards northern Wisconsin and parts of Minnesota. Now, eventually, this area of low pressure tracks right on top of us that transitions things over towards a period of snow that we will see as we head into your Sunday for that reason with the snow and wind expected along with some minor accumulation. We do have an alert day for your Sunday as that's a big travel day. We think there will be some delays as you head towards north, but we dry out Monday through Friday looks great. Even Saturday looks great. We'll watch another chance for a wintry mix as we head towards next weekend. Even that poses a potential of some accumulating snow. We've got several days to watch that one. In the meantime, all attention is focused on this weekend and what that means as folks begin to head home. Speaking of hitting the road, though, let's go ahead and head over to Josh Tim with your first alert traffic. Josh. Yeah, good morning. A little bit of wetness on the road so far this morning. Things could be slick at the ramps and the bridges. Just make sure you give yourself a few minutes extra. So far, though, no delays on the belt it's line. Frozen. Things are uh, well east and westbound of the roads here in Dane County. Not looking too bad. Just a few brake lights showing up on Stoughton Road as you approach the Beltline ramps. Nothing to slow you down around campus. Volume is not an issue. And other main routes heading into the city, they're moving at the usual speeds right now with no major crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you, Josh and Chris. Smoke is continuing to hang in the air this morning, days after an explosion at a Texas chemical plant that has the residents there worried about their safety. Thousands of people were out of their homes for Thanksgiving because of a mandatory evacuation order as fires still burn at the TPC plant. The explosion happened Wednesday morning, but officials say they still don't know what caused it or what chemicals may be burning. Officials say the air quality is being monitored and is safe, but people within a four mile radius of the plant are still told to stay away. That's left many residents worried as they wait to return home. I've been watching it ever since we got back. I'm, I'm hoping, I wish the wind would turn west on us and push it offshore. Officials will meet later this morning for an update on the fire and decide whether the evacuation order will stay in place. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is extremely satisfied after testing a new missile on Thanksgiving. North Korea says it successfully tested a, quote, super large multiple rocket launcher, reaching an estimated height of 60 miles. They traveled up to the 230 miles before crashing into the waters off Japan's west coast. In recent weeks, North Korea has ramped up its display of military force while warning the United States that a crisis could be at hand if a new nuclear deal isn't reached by December 31st. The Trump administration has yet to respond to that deadline. And NATO is celebrating its 70th birthday today. Originally founded in 1949 as a means of defense against the Soviet Union. Since then, the Cold War NATO has helped to end conflicts in Eastern Europe and the 26 nation alliance aims to enhance the stability, well-being and freedom of its members. Major NATO members include such countries as the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, France and Belgium. As you prepare to deck the halls, farmers are asking you to think of the local community. We'll tell you how you and your family can support local businesses after the break. And as you head out the door for your Black Friday shopping, Chris Reese says you're going to want to dress warm and maybe bring an umbrella. Your first alert forecast is just ahead.
Welcome back. We're taking a live look right outside. A little dark, maybe some snowflakes in that scene, Chris? There actually very well could be. We've seen a few snowflakes out there this morning. We're tracking that, of course. All right, Chris. Well, thank you so much. And uh, what else are we experiencing in terms of weather out there? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If you want to put up the Christmas lights, I think today is a good day to do it. I like it's, how it says, do it, do it now. Yes, do it now. Well, it's wintry. It's Black Friday, folks. And here's how the weather's been shaping up. It's not going to be all that bad of a day. So, Keely, yes, do it and do it now. Just as she said. We did see some snow flurries earlier this morning. Some of those are still coming down right now, but some of the drier air is filtering in. That's transitioning things over to to a period of some freezing drizzle. But still, as you work your way just north of Madison, back through Sauk City, over towards Lone Rock, we're seeing some light snow right now. This has also been impacting areas just north of Wanakee. So in the meantime, even though Doppler track is not showing the snow over you, if you were to step outside, you might still see some of those flurries coming down because I noticed that here at the station not too long ago. 31 right now. Look for temperatures to warm up through the mid 30s as we head through mid day. All right, Chris. Well, thank you so much. And here is a look at what Will Loper says you should be watching this weekend. Are you baiting me, detective? Attempting to be thorough so we can figure out the manner of death. You mean if someone killed him? <gasps> you think one of us, one of his family, Walt, Walt. killed him? Jamie Lee Curtis, Daniel Craig, Tony Collette, and more make up the killer cast in this slick and stylish murder mystery. The family is truly desperate. When people get desperate, the knives come out. This is a twisted web. And we are not finished untangling it. Not yet. Knives Out is rated PG-13. I keep waiting for the big reveal. All of them lied to me. There is one guilty party behind it all. CSI, KS. And local businesses are hoping you remember them as you work your way through those wish lists. The 10th annual Small Business Saturday is tomorrow. Many local and independently owned shops around town will have special deals and discounts to help keep money in the local community. That includes Monroe Street, where you can get a special shop small canvas bag while shopping there. About two thirds of every dollar spent at a local store stays right here in the community. And today is the day lots of us might head out with our families to pick a Christmas tree. And Wisconsin farmers are asking that you stick with local options. The state has more than an 850 Christmas tree farms, which puts us at fifth in the nation for the number of acres in production. More than 700,000 evergreens are harvested in the state every year, and they generate more than $16 million for the Wisconsin economy. Around here, you can drop by Hans Christmas Tree Farm outside of Oregon, Jensen Trees in Verona, and Summers out in Middleton, just to name a few. The price of a Christmas tree is actually up, according to the National Christmas Tree Association. It's a wintry mix of supply and demand. America is facing a Christmas tree shortage, while at the same time, consumer demand is higher, especially from millennials. Despite the tight supply, the association assures everyone that if you want a tree, you will be able to find one. Still ahead, we've got the top three things you need to know as you head out the door this morning. And you may be wanting to go out and find out the perfect gift for your kids today. We have some Black Friday and cyber deals just ahead. Beat the
From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and thanks for starting your day with us here. It is Friday, November 29th. We hope you had a very happy Thanksgiving. We'll get a check on weather with Chris in just a second, but first, here are the top three things you need to know as you get your day started. Shoppers are expected to drop a total of seven and a half billion dollars nationwide today as part of Black Friday. That would be up more than 20% from last year, and that's after a more than record billion, four billion rather, worth of spending was expected over Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving this year's shopping season is actually six days shorter than last year due to Thanksgiving falling so late. Second, President Trump is headed home this morning after a surprise visit to U.S. troops over in Afghanistan for Thanksgiving. It was his first visit to the region since becoming president and comes less than three months after talks with the Taliban collapsed. He addressed the situation, saying he restarted peace negotiations with the militant group in the war-torn country. And finally, the third story we're monitoring, smoke is continuing to hang in the air this morning, days after an explosion at a Texas chemical plant. A mandatory evacuation order is still in place as fires continue to burn at the TPC plant. The explosion happened Wednesday morning. Officials say they still don't know what the cause is or what chemicals may still be burning. Officials say the air quality is being monitored right now and monitoring the weather for us. Chris Reese joining us. Chris, a little snow out there? there there is a little snow out there, not a lot, but that's one of the three things to know as we head through your Black Friday. We had snow out there earlier on. Some of that may be continuing, but then things transition over to a period of freezing drizzle and eventually just all drizzle as we head into the afternoon. Saturday will be rain and snow, primarily rain. Then on Sunday we will see rain to snow. There's a word difference there as things begin to transition and some of that could be a period of some brief accumulating snow on Sunday. In the meantime, this is high resolution Doppler right now. A lot of the snow in Dane County is no longer showing up on radar with that drier air working on an into town. But as you work your way towards Prairie to Sac up towards Woodland, that's where we are seeing at least some light snow right now. Sun Prairie, Cottage Grove, Stoughton, things are likely beginning to dry out for folks just towards the east. We're still seeing some light snow reported at the airport. The temperature 31 right now will warm up into the mid 30s by the time we get you towards midday. Of course, we're watching traffic. This shot right here is I-9094 County Highway C. This is in north central Wisconsin. Notice all the snow that is on the ground there. Thankfully, a lot of that outside of the lane. So far, no delay showing up as you work your way in the actual city of Madison, but we are starting to see at least a couple brake lights on some of those routes headed towards downtown. All right, thanks for checking all of that for us, Chris. The rise in online shopping means crowds are a little more sparse on Black Friday today. For the first time ever, most Black Friday shopping will actually be done online and not in person. This is a live look at the Macy's at Hilldale Shopping Center this morning. Some of the holiday shopping deals started on Thanksgiving Day, but a number of local shopping centers decided not to open early, instead letting their employees and shoppers enjoy Thanksgiving with their families. Both East and West Town Malls opened at 6 this morning, and Hilldale Shopping Center, what you're looking at right now, will open at 9, although some stores also open here at 6 a.m. As we are seeing this morning, experts say if getting up before dawn to head to the store isn't your thing, there's a better day to get the best deals. It's actually Cyber Monday where you'll see the most savings on things like clothes or home items, and they are going to have bigger discounts overall. Last year we saw a 27% increase in sales on Cyber Monday than we saw on Black Friday. So we're anticipating $10 billion in sales on Cyber Monday and really the best deals are out there. If you're worried about the possibility of porch pirates, a lot of stores are actually offering free store pickup, allowing you to save some money on shipping and keep your stuff safe. And you may not have to wait until Monday to get those deals since a lot of retailers actually started their online deals early to make up for lost shopping days with a very late Thanksgiving this year. 
A lot of us have years of traditions when it comes to family Thanksgiving gatherings, but some people are experiencing their very first Thanksgiving this year. That includes a pair of foreign exchange students in western Wisconsin. Simon is from Italy and Casper from Poland. They're staying with James and Tag Bushman in Holman, just outside of La Crosse. As foreign exchange students and got their first taste of the American tradition this year. They say they've seen Thanksgiving portrayed in American television and movies, but it's nothing like what they experienced for themselves. I meet other friends, I meet other people that is very so nice for me and for accept me in this family. I'm so excited to like spend this Thanksgiving like in like family uh, with family. Simone and Casper didn't just get a taste of Thanksgiving. They helped prepare the meal too, getting their own handmade aprons as gifts from the family. Very cute. While many places opened up their doors to people without a home on Thanksgiving, a church in Beloit provided a place for a different group of people who did not have a place to go. Beloit's first congregational church hosted a meal for members of the LGBTQ community who didn't feel welcome at their family's home. Organizers say it's a chance to help people feel accepted and meet new people as well because everyone deserves a family to enjoy the holidays with. Having someone um, not accept you is really hard, but when it's someone as close as your family, it's much harder. This isn't about gay rights. This is about equal rights. This is about being a simple human and having human de decency towards one another. This is the third year the church and local organizations have worked together to host the Thanksgiving meal. And it's not just churches showing the Thanksgiving spirit. Mark Rudd of Mr. Rudd's Barbershop in Sun Prairie also hosted a Thanksgiving meal. He put a soul food twist on the traditional dishes, also throwing in collard greens and smoked turkey young. He said he hosted this for the community, but they helped out too. Rudd said people dropped off money to help and Costco donated the turkeys. He's happy he's able to give back to the people of Sun Prairie. This community has embraced my barbershop expeditiously, and I just wanted to be able to do something to give, it, to give back to this community because the community has been good to me. Rudd hopes to make this an annual event. He already hosted a dinner over the summer, but he wants to do these community meals at least once in every season. In case you missed it, the Kalahari Resort in the Dells had a float feature for the second time this year at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York. The float first made its debut last year, and the Kalahari says it looks to take viewers on a journey to Africa. Chibaz and Chile from the 1990s girl group TLC rode the float during the parade. And if you're wondering, the parade's balloons did fly after concerns that it would be too windy to send them up to air. Well, coming up in the morning sprint, authorities are asking for your help in finding a missing elderly couple. We are telling you the very latest. And this year's Battle of the Axe may be the most important one yet. We're bringing you a first look at the Badgers' last regular season game of the year right after the break. Beat the
Welcome back. We've been asking you to share your morning with us and check out this very picturesque Wisconsin winter photo sent in by Paula. Thank you so much for sharing. What does your morning look like? You can take a picture and post it to the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning and we will share our favorites right here on the air. A lot is on the line in the Badgers final regular season game tomorrow. In addition to Paul Bunyan's axe, a trip to the Big Ten championship game and a possible spot in the Rose Bowl is up for grabs. Now the Badgers will head to the Twin Cities to play the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The Badgers lost the axe to Minnesota last year in Camp Randall. It was the first time since 2003 that Minnesota beat Wisconsin in their annual rivalry game. It's a big game, a big opportunity. It's definitely definitely be fun. To, it's going to be a great feeling to get that action. Positive thinking there. I love it. News 3 now sports team is headed up to the Twin Cities today and we'll have more on how the Badgers are getting ready for the big game later today. Kickoff is set for 2:30 Saturday and the Packers didn't play on Thanksgiving, but Lambeau Field was far from empty on the holiday. A Thanksgiving feast was held in the atrium, providing a meal and sharing the day with those who may otherwise not have gotten a Thanksgiving dinner. The event hosted by Christian Outreach is held to help bring the holiday spirit. Some volunteers have been coming for decades and say it's a great way to see people come together. People that show up here are usually just people who are alone possibly, people that can't afford a meal. It's about people wanting to be together and this is a great community service and uh, we're all happy they're here. Uh, it's good to see them. It's and we're continuing to track some winter weather that could impact your holiday travel as folks are coming home. Chris is bringing the latest updates in the first alert forecast next. But first, if you have a little kiddo turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture up on TV. Thanks for watching News Through Now this morning. And Look who's through.
I'll tell you what, folks, it's Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. A lot of family traditions are to put up the tree and the decorations. And if you have outdoor decorations to put up, I think today is a day that you can do it. Even if you can't do it now, early next week will certainly work, and really all of next week will work. But feel free to go ahead and do so just in the spirit of the Black Friday tradition there. We are tracking some snow throughout the area, especially north of Dane County right now. Although, here in Madison, we did see some of that light snow coming down at a good clip at one point earlier this morning. Still, even though the drier air is coming in, you might notice some flurries or some drizzle as you are out in about. In the meantime, the radar is quiet for Sun Prairie, Wanakee, Cross Plains, all the way down throughout Mount Horeb and Fitchburg as well. Down in Rock County, we did see some freezing drizzle and sleet earlier this morning as well. Now a lot of this is drying out, but we still could see some flurries at times. So honestly, that's the theme as we go throughout the entire day. But here's the radar loop over the past six hours, just showing you the rounds of snow that did come through. We've got a new one that's developed throughout South East southeastern Minnesota, but folks, this is the area that we are going to be paying attention to now as we go through the rest of today and the weekend. A big time winter storm will impact the high plains in the northern part of the country as folks begin to head home for the holiday. Here's how things begin to play out. The same system will begin to overspread with snow and rain as we head into tonight and earlier on on Saturday. Here we are now Saturday afternoon. A warm front moves north of Madison. I think that transitions things over to a period of rainfall for us. Notice the mix throughout central and northern Wisconsin. You work your way up towards the Twin Cities. That's where things will likely be snow. As we go through the rest of your Saturday, this area of low pressure tracks right over southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. Now Sunday morning, pay attention as the colder air begins to filter back into the system. That begins to change things over to snow. And I think as this system begins to move away, we will see a period of some falling snow here in southern Wisconsin as well. Some of that could be accumulating, especially as you work your way just towards the north of Madison. Here we are Sunday at four o'clock. I do still think we'll be seeing those flakes flying across the area. So if you're traveling, please be very mindful of that. Now we do have an alert day just because that's a big travel day. But folks, once we get beyond Sunday, we dry out. Here we are for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday. Friday. They all have, <laughs> they all, have, let's name all the days. You get a sunshine, you get a sunshine. All of the days in that forecast, folks. But we are watching uh, next Saturday night into Sunday for potentially the next system to come our way. Right now, that does look like a mix of some rain and snow. It's all just going to depend on where the colder air sets up. But for now, if you are traveling, especially towards the north, big impacts are expected this weekend. If you're traveling south, we should not see that big of an issue. That's good advice because I know everybody's kind of driving all different parts. <laughs> all different whole, directions. Yeah, we have to really cover it all. Flying, flight delays. It is possible because it's going to be another very windy system as well, but we'll track it through the weekend. All right, and yeah, you said Christmas decorations. Put them up today or Go this ahead. week if you can. Put them up. Okay. Don't do it Sunday. It's going to be windy. All right. <laughs> all right. Good advice. Thank you, Chris. Well, the morning sprint is up next on News 3 Now this morning. Stay with us.
652 time for the morning sprint. We start with breaking news overnight out of Dane County. A silver alert is being issued for an elderly Dane County couple after they haven't been seen since leaving a family gathering on Thanksgiving. Donald and Colleen Soper are both 87 years old. They were last seen in Black Earth at around 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Colleen has dementia and Donald is a diabetic who can get disoriented if his blood sugar isn't managed. They were last seen in a black Dodge Caliber with license plate 327 FXX. And Fitchburg police are looking for two people after a robbery at a stop and go at Fish Hatchery Road. It happened just before 9 p.m. last night. Police say two people were wearing masks when they went into the store, pointed a gun at an employee and demanded money. They got away with some of that money and a canine unit was not able to track them down. Police say the investigation is ongoing. And a Janesville man is in jail after shooting another person early Thanksgiving morning. Janesville police responded to a report of a gunshot wound south on Willard Street at about a half a mile away from Edison Middle School around 630 yesterday morning. The victim suffered non life threatening injuries and was treated and released. The victim told police 26 year old Gage Holmes was the one who shot him. He was arrested and faces charges of first degree attempted homicide. And the Greene County Sheriff's Office believes that these three, Tasha Nafsker, Kyle Dish, and Darwin Demro, are involved in a multi-state meth trafficking organization. They were arrested this week after police found 115 grams of suspected meth at Demro's home. All three face a number of charges, including those directly related to meth trafficking. Authorities are expected to charge more people in relation to this case. We saw a round of light snow move through the area earlier on this morning. It came down at a good clip for a time as well. Now things are starting to dry out, at least in southern Wisconsin, but we're still seeing another round of light snow developing as you work your way towards central parts of the state. Temperature wise, we are at 31 in Madison, 20s as you work your way up towards the Dallas. As you plan the day, though, look for those temperatures to warm up. We'll keep the clouds and drizzle around. We'll be at 36 by the time we get you towards noon. And breaking overnight, a woman is dead after a fire overnight at her home in Beaver Dam. It happened just after 10 p.m. on Watercrest Lane. Deputies were able to rescue the 82-year-old woman, but she died from her injuries later at a hospital. A 91-year-old man also suffered injuries, but his were non-life-threatening. The cause of the fire is under investigation. And some Prairie's fire chief is calling for all residential buildings in the city to have working fire alarms and sprinklers. It comes after several residents were rescued during a fire at an apartment complex early yesterday morning. Fire chief Chris Garrison says the building was compliant with fire codes from the 70s, but smoke detectors in the building weren't activated and the building's fire alarms weren't automatic. And smoke is continuing to hang in the air this morning, days after an explosion at a Texas chemical plant. A mandatory evacuation order is still in place as fires continue to burn at the TPC plant. The explosion happened Wednesday morning. Officials say they don't really know what the cause is or what chemicals may still be burning. Officials believe the air quality is safe. And President Trump is headed home this morning after a surprise visit with U.S. troops in Afghanistan for Thanksgiving. It was his first visit to the region since becoming president and comes less than three months after U.S. talks with the Taliban collapsed. He addressed the situation saying he restarted peace negotiations with the militant group in the war-torn country. And shoppers are expected to drop a total of seven and a half billion dollars nationwide as part of Black Friday. That would be up more than 20% from last year. That's after a record of more than four billion dollars worth of spending was expected on Thanksgiving. This year's shopping season is actually six days shorter than last year due to Thanksgiving being so late. And oh yeah, a lot is on the line for the Badgers final regular season of the game tomorrow. In addition to Paul Bunyan's acts of trip to the Big Ten championship game and a possible spot at the Rose Bowl is up for grabs as the Badgers travel to Twin Cities to play the Minnesota Gophers. Minnesota won the axe from the Badgers on senior day at Camp Randall last season. Now the Badgers will look to return the favor. Kickoff is set for 230. 
tomorrow. And let's take it over to Josh Tim. Hi, Josh. Yeah, good morning. Dealing with a crash on the northbound interstate near Janesville. It's closing the right-hand lane at mile marker 170. I would expect some extra brake lights as it continues to get busier. So far, volume is down on the Beltline this morning. Really no delays showing up yet in either direction. There are a few brake lights starting to pop up on inbound John Nolan approaching the Rimrock intersection heading into downtown. And other main routes leading into the city, they're still cruising at the usual speeds with no major issues. With your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you, Josh. And Chris, oh, look, we have some we have some animals to show. Before we talk about the weather, more importantly, diesel and moose. Yeah, this is your pet walk. We'll see a chance for some freezing drizzle as we go through the afternoon. Look for temperatures around 38 near 3 o'clock. As we get through the weekend, look for more rain and chances for minor accumulating snow on Sunday. We'll dry out in the week ahead. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a very happy holiday, and you can hang out with Chris and I at noon.